Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. So in this video, I'll talk about why I've started taking NMN and look at the safety of NMN. So for those of you who watched my previous video about NMN, the what, the why and the when, it kind of looks like I just persuaded myself to take this supplement. But I was actually taking it before then and that isn't quite the case. But what I didn't talk about last time is the safety aspects of NMN. And so, as I said at the end of my last video, there is currently no long-term studies on the safety of NMN in humans. And I said I'd talk about this a bit more in this week's video. So here I am talking about the safety of NMN and also why I'm taking it in the first place. So yeah, once I've explained why I take it, I'll look into the two main bits of concerns I've seen in the literature, mainly methylation and potentially inflammation as well. And then lastly, I'll say and discuss about what you can do about this. So on the 31st of December 2019, I started taking NMN, which stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide, and it is a precursor to NAD. So as I explained in my previous video, NAD is a cofactor that's really important for metabolism and also the activity of NAD-dependent proteins, including some proteins involved in the DNA damage response. So I would recommend watching that video first before continuing with this one, but in case you don't want to, and also because I go into the synthesis in the last week's video and you've already forgotten and it's always good to have a refresher, I have drawn out the synthesis pathway here. So we can see that NMN is converted to NAD+, which is the main thing to, to point out so far. NAD+, is then consumed, um, for example, by three enzymes, PUP1, CD38 and sirtuins, and converted to nicotinamide or NAM, NAM, I actually didn't know how you meant to say it. So you can actually get NMN from your diet. So NMN seen in broccoli and cucumber, but you'd need to have a lot of broccoli to get a high dose of NMN. So the alternative strategy is to take NMN as supplements. So this is what I've been taking for just over a week now. So I take one tablet a day and so that is meant to be around 125 milligrams of NMN that I take daily. But the key question is, well, why am I taking it? So it is pretty well established now that NAD plus levels decline as we age. And then studies that have tried to restore these levels were able to counteract and prevent many age associated diseases. And so they saw improvements and extension in health span and lifespan. But most of these studies have been done in organisms such as mice. But the fact that they saw improvements in physical performance, muscle regeneration, and helped to prevent decline in fission, these are all kind of really outstanding uh, phenotypes that they saw in these studies, even the one about improvements in neuroprotective benefits. So I guess this is really the main reason why I decided to start taking NMN. Not because I want to live forever, but just because it would be nice, you know, not to, you know, lose my sight or my physical performance. But I think the more important reason is more the scientist in me who is just intrigued to see what happens. And yes, I know that curiosity killed the cat, and I am definitely curious to see what does happen. But this is why I'm going to now move on to looking at what is known about the safety of taking NMN as a supplement. And should I be scared? Is the, the other question. So what is known about NMN safety? Well, I came across a 2016 study where they had mice take NMN for 12 months and they saw no toxicity. But, you know, the thing is, well, I'm not a mouse. And as I said at the start, there has currently been no long-term report of the safety of NMN in humans. So what are the potential safety concerns? Well, from reading about the literature, there are like two main categories. One looks at the issue of methylation and a more recent study, which I've not seen anyone really talk about, is a link between NMN and inflammation. So firstly, let's look at the potential risk of methylation and what people are talking about in terms of methylation. So what most people seem to be talking about with regards to NMN supplementation and increasing NAD plus levels is that you have the adverse effect of decreasing the availability of methylation donors. So out of the different NAD derivatives, nicotinamide, NAM, can get methylated to uh, one methyl nicotinamide or MENAM. I think that's quite a fun word to say. But to generate MENAM, you use up SAM and SAM is a methyl donor 
And in addition to MENAM, you also generate S-adenosyl homocysteine, which can then get uh, converted to homocysteine. And so if you have increased nicotinamide because you've got excess NAD+, you use up these methyl donors. That means that there's less SAM available for other molecules such as creatine and dopamine. And in addition to the loss of the methyl donors, there's also evidence that having high homocysteine levels uh, could increase your risk of vascular disease. So, you know, maybe it's not looking good, but that's what people are saying. So how true is this and how relevant is this to N NMN supplementation? Well, again, as I said, we just don't have the evidence at the moment, but I did come across a recent paper that looked at the safety of niogen, which is nicotinamide riboside chloride which, as you saw earlier on, is converted to NMN and then NAD+. So I have put a link in the description to this paper, but the title is Safety and Metabolism of Long-Term Administration of Niagen in a Randomised, Double-Blind, Placebo-Controlled Clinical Trial of Healthy, Overweight Adults. What a mouthful. So they say that this study is long-term, so they actually did it for eight weeks, and they did it with different doses of Niagen. And so I just put some of the results up here. So one thing they obviously measured was the blood NAD plus levels to see if they do see an increase um, during the period, which is one thing like you need to know first before you start looking at the safety issues. And so as they went from 100 milligrams up to 1000 milligrams, they did see an increase in the percentage of NAD plus from 22 up to 142% increase. But um, and they also visit day 56 and they see slight increases as well, although it looks like it's kind of plateaued, which is kind of interesting. But what about the homocysteine levels? Well, they also looked at this and what they saw was regardless of whether the, the patients took none, 10, 300 or 1 gram of niogen, they actually didn't see any difference. So there doesn't really seem to be a risk with homocysteine levels, but again, this is niogen, not NMN. And also, I wouldn't really say eight weeks is long term, but you know, it's better than nothing. But the reason I flagged up methylation is partly due to the reason that it's not too sure how NMN gets transported into cells. So there seems to be some evidence that NMN has to be converted to NR before it gets transported. But there's also potential evidence that NMN could also just be converted to nicotinamide. And as we know, that might increase the homocysteine levels. So I think it's worth pointing out that this definitely is a potential issue. So, but it's also just one big question mark at the moment. So what can you do about it? So one potential solution is to increase the levels of these methyl donors. And you can do that by supplementing with trimethylglycine, which is what I am doing, but not as frequently as I take NMN. So another warning for taking NMN has come from a paper that was published in Nature that talks about the link between NMN, NAD and inflammation and senescence. So maybe because this paper is more recent, I don't know, but I've not really heard many people talk about this risk associated with NMN supplementation. So the title is NAD plus metabolism governs the pro-inflammatory senescence associated secretome. Now there might be a few scary words in that title, but I'll try and break it down as much as I can. So firstly, the senescence associated secretome is often referred to as the SASP. We'll come back to that in a little bit. But the bottom line is that this paper seems to suggest that if you increase NAD plus levels, you increase inflammation. And then inflammation we know drives aging or it's one of the hallmarks of aging. So this paper mainly focuses on cellular senescence, which I talk about before in the hallmarks of aging. And it can be thought of as when cells stop dividing and instead you can see them secrete different molecules, mainly cytokines and inflammatory molecules, which is referred to as the senescence associated secretory phenotype or the SASP. So senescence is a really complicated process that we are still trying to understand. In fact, my PhD is related to senescence, but in terms of this video, I'll mainly focus about the findings of this paper. And so the key thing you need to know is that the cells secrete these pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are just pretty much signaling molecules that recruit in um, immune cells. And so what this paper seems to suggest is, as we know, that nicotinamide um, gets converted back to NMN and then NMN gets converted to NAD+. 
you end up increasing the NAD plus ratio if you supplement with NMN. And this increase in the ratio of NAD plus to the reduced form NADH represses the activity of a protein AMPK, which is AMP kinase. And this protein um, would normally activate P53 and P53 inhibits another protein called P38 map kinase. So, I mean, that's a little bit of relevant information. The key thing is that if you increase the NAD plus levels, the downstream response is that you end up activating P38 map kinase. And so P38 map kinase is known to interact with NF-kappa B, and NF-kappa B is known to drive the production of these different cytokines involved in the SASP. And then the SASP drives inflammation and inflammation drives aging. It's kind of the, the summary from this paper. But I mean, this is, just, this is just one paper at the moment. And I mean, these findings need to be backed up. And plus, most of the studies in this paper did it in cells that were already senescent. Obviously, I mean, again, we do accumulate senescent cells as we age, but I think there just really isn't enough evidence at the moment for this to be convincing or to be too concerned until it's further backed up with more evidence to really understand what is going on. But definitely there could be positive and negative effects of taking NMN. But it's whether or not the positives outweigh the negatives. But yeah, going back to this paper again, they do state um, in their conclusion that NAD plus augmenting dietary supplements may be tumorigenic in vivo in stress conditions such as pre-malignant senescent lesions induced by activated oncogenes. So, I mean, there is a risk, um, but again, like, you know, how, how much risk can I take? I mean, I think the biggest risk for me is probably my age. Like, obviously, I'm quite young and that's, you know, the long-term effects is what we really don't know in addition to the short-term effects. So yeah, as I said earlier, curiosity may kill the cat, but <laughs> I think I'm going to be okay, to be honest. I'm not too concerned. We'll see what happens. Anyway, um, hopefully this has been an interesting video for you to understand why I'm taking NMN, but also, you know, there are concerns with it, so don't, don't just do something because I'm doing it. Please ask your doctor first. But as always, hopefully this was interesting, and thank you for listening.